Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to continue okay, on so with the processing of the M104 galaxy. Sorry, with the processing of the M106 galaxy. I don't even know what I'm looking at. Um, this, um, I've already done the first few parts, which are on my YouTube channel. So we've got it to this stage here. So what I'm going to do is show you what we do past here to make it look even better. So as you can see, looking at the screen here, you've got a bit of white blockiness. You can see the galaxies I wanted to get in the image. Here, there's one here, there's one here, one here, one here. There's a couple of others as well that you can't see yet. And the first thing we do is we put a mask on. So we have to make that mask. Done by clicking this button here. What that will do is it will make a black and white image of that screen that you can see there. And what we do now is we run a histogram transformation on this image to remove the white blockchain. It's basically crushed the image a little bit so that everything that we want to be black is as black as we can get it, and everything that we want to stay light is as light as we can get it. So run up the histogram transformation there click on the tick box real time preview you can see that the the view is on the abl underscore l that's luminance or lightness and what we do here we've got the real time preview so anything we do here isn't attached to this image yet until we actually apply it so we can see what we're doing first what I'll do is I just crush this image down by moving these sliders and we'll move this center one across to the left and crush out that whiteness that we don't but we've got to be very careful we've got to watch here on the galaxy don't affect that So, that is a, about the spot just there, I think. So now what we do is we shut down real-time preview. And this little triangle here, we drag this over there, over this image, and that will apply this that we've done to that image. And shut down histogram transformation. Then what we do is this tab here, drag it over here, side, this is our main image, and minimize that. What that's done is it's applied a mask to this image. Now we can't see the mask, but if I click on mask and show mask, you'll see it shows up pretty red. Everything that is red is protected. Everything that isn't red, is not protected so obviously what we want to do is we want to work on the background so we have to reverse this quite simple mask vert mask now you can see everything that's black we're now going to affect with what we do from now on and everything that's red hopefully won't change but you know you never know so then we go to processes Curves transformation. Hit the tick box again. Leave it on RGBK and again bring up the real time preview. Before we do that, we just click that show mask button. Now we don't have the mask showing. It's still applied, but it's just not showing on our image. Bring up the real time preview. And we want to find the spots that we don't want to affect by what we're doing now. Well, obviously, that's going to be this area here, this white area. You can see where I'm clicking on the image just there. Over here, you're, there's some lines appearing. That's part that we don't want to move around this, this area here. So, what we do is we put some markers on the image here on the actual line so through the curves transformation and we'll put a couple down here as well. 
And we want to change this background. So if we click on that, you can see that it's around about here. You saw that, that line there. And all we do is we drag that line down. Watch the real time preview. You'll see the real time preview going blacker and not a lot of change to the galaxies and stars. So that's about the spot just there. We we'll close down real time preview and then drag this triangle across to the main image. And then apply this curves transformation to this image, making the background blacker, getting rid of all that whiteness that we had. And we can shut down curves transformation now. Next thing we want to do is we're going to run a bit of HDR or local histogram transformation on this just to see if we can make it a little bit better without messing about with the colors. So we've still got the mask applied. But remember, what we want to do now is invert the mask, show, show the mask to you. You can see there that we're now going to affect what these areas here. The background won't be affected. These, uh, these areas here will be going to now. Let's hide the mask. Which is always weird to me because it's a show mask, but in fact, what we're doing is unshowing it. And let's load up the Tri HDR multi scale transfer to start with. What we want to do now is take a preview of the galaxy just here. So we can see it a little bit better. Leave these settings as default for now and just drag this triangle over that preview. See what happens to it. Let's see if it totally wrecks it. Hope not. Waiting for that. There you see it's kind of done something to it. I don't know whether I like it. Really. Um, up here, there's a little button. Nice. Using clicking this button, I can undo that change. We can click it back. It's a bit too excessive, I think. So what we'll do is we're just just going to try nudging this up to seven. Drag that back over there and see what happens now. If it makes a difference. Obviously, all these processes are can be quite long. Um, if we get into star mass and things like that, the processes take take a while to run, and uh, I'm not sure I want to do that. The other sad thing is it's a really cl clear night outside, but I can't image because I've got work. Starting now, it's like one o'clock in the morning. Um, I'm just not going to do that this time of night. So uh, it's looking too bad, actually. Bringing that out quite nicely. So now we've done it on the preview. We can just turn this on and off. So see how it brings out the detail. We'll go back to the main image. We'll drag the triangle over there. And we'll have to wait a while. Now, this is quite a big image. It's actually drizzled, so it's, it's, it's quite a large image in terms of file size. So I'm just going to let this run. I'm just going to go off the mic for a second while this runs. And um, yeah, got to get to 100% and see everything change on the image. If you're wondering about this software, this software is Pix in sight. Um, I. When I first started, I used Photoshop. I wasn't very good with Photoshop. I messed about with it over, over the years. Um, doing different things, but I was never very good with it. So what I did was I bought Pix Insight. I've been trying to learn it now for about six months. There's so much in it. I mean, I do pretty much basic things. With People say it's got a steep learning curve. I'm not so sure about that. It's just a different way. Of, uh, it's really nice the way it does stuff, but there's so much in it that I'm not really even touching. I don't know anything about it. I don't know much about pixel math and things like that. Only what I read on various astronomy forums, how to do things. 
But anyway, that's the HDR multi scale transform applied. You can see things are starting to get a little bit cleaner. And the next thing we're going to have a little go at, just to see if it makes a difference, I'm not sure if it will, is um, local histogram equalization. Which can be quite a brutal thing to use. So we go back to the preview. And this actually has a real time preview, which is handy. So we'll run the real time preview up and you can see what it's doing to that image. To start off with, it's a bit eh, too much. So we just play around with these sliders and see what do. Raise that. Raise this one to a hundred. Hopefully, you can still hear me. I'm using the minus key on my keyboard to, uh, to do my push to talk. But I've turned push to talk off now. We just noticed this up to a hundred. Let's keep going. I don't want to go too crazy on this because uh, I'm bringing out all sorts of weird effects on the stars. But let's just see what happens. If we wind it up to say 300, let's see what that looks like. Not very good. It's uh, kind of blowing it out quite a bit. So drop this back down. I found actually, I've actually found around about 100 works okay on quite a few of the things that I've done. And let's just play with this contrast and just see what this does. Yeah, you see that's ah, it's just no so good. Some of these processes you have to have really good data to uh, to use them on. So let's click that little button there that undoes the real time preview. Right, that's not doing anything with contrast at one. Let's get it at 0.5. That's brought out, yeah, it's brought it out a little bit better. The M106 is actually not a very detailed galaxy, unless you can get him really tight on it, in terms of um, something like Orion Nebula, uh, which is a massive pinky purple thing. But this, uh, this is quite good. We're doing this on this galaxy. It's quite a difficult one to actually bring out correctly. So we're going to use those settings. I think let me just actually let me just try and note it a little bit. I can see some very subtle changes on. Don't know if you can. I put that at ninety. Just do an on and off of it. The changes yeah, we'll use 94 so we shut down the real-time preview and then drag this over main image and again this is going to take a while right so that's the image process so what we'll do now we we'll shut down local Instagram realization and we'll remove the mask I'm going to redo the mask that preview and just save this. If you don't save it, you to crash it, you lose all your work. Do all these processes. So that's what it looks like so far. Now, what we'll do one of the things actually, I'll tell you about star masking. One of the processes that you can use is to use a star mask. You generally use a star mask when. You have a lot of stars and they're all quite big and the reason for using the star mask is that it reduces the level of the stars and then that makes the what you actually want to see pop out a little bit but you can see on this image there isn't that many stars so i'm not going to actually do a star mask on this image what i am going to do now is i'm going to do the color and to do the color i need another mask 
And the reason I'm redoing the mask is I've adjusted the image and the mask that we were using set up on the older image. So we're going to redo the mask. Uh, this looks pretty good. I'm not going to mess about with brightness levels on this one like I did before. Drag that over there. Drop that down there like that. <clears throat> Let's just check what we're looking at. Uh, show mask again. Yeah, you can see the background's protected, the galaxies aren't. So unshow the mask. And then to do the color, we use Earth's transformation. Reset that. Tick the box. Put on real time preview. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to put a preview box over Galaxy. I can see it a bit better. That real time preview on. And then we'll go to this button here, the S button, which is saturation. Basically, that's color. So we'll click on the saturation button. And what we're going to do is just, just going to try this. We're just going to drag this bar up. See if it's adding any color into Galaxy. Yes. It's four. It's after. Color has now returned to our Galaxy. Shut that down. Go back to the main image. That tab there. And drag that over there. And there we go. That's added color to our galaxy. Shut that down. <clears throat> Let's do this, make it a bit bigger. Added some color into M106. We haven't destroyed the stars too badly. <laughs> what, what can happen when you're doing all these processes? You're looking so hard at the actual galaxy, you forget about the stars. And then when you actually think you finished the imaging, the image, you look at it and go, hang on a minute, I've destroyed all the bloody stars. Because they've all gone massive and they've got halos and they've got dots in the middle and all sorts of problems. But I think uh, I think that's okay. So that will be it for this image. I'm not going to push this image any further because I, even though I did quite a few nights imaging on this object, the data that I, that I got wasn't that brilliant. It was done on... Sort of really crappy nights. So we'll pull off the mask. So remove mask. This is your mask here. We shut that down. And what I'm going to show you now is something that I did this at the beginning of the image processing. You run a script on the image called image solver and what the image solver does is it looks at the image and then it compares that image to lots and lots of pictures thousands of pictures of the sky that are kept in databases all around the world and it solves the image so we know exactly what we're looking at i've already done that in the previous video hopefully we now go to here render and then annotate image that data, that WCS data, is still on the image. And you can see our untick planets, there's no planets in there, there's no asteroids. PGC stands for, um, these are actually galaxies, they're very small, very difficult to see. NGC is a catalogue of galaxies, space objects. Messier catalogue and named stars we've got ticked. So what I'll do is I'll click OK on that. What that'll do is it'll produce another image. This time annotated, telling us exactly what we're looking at. So all these PGCs, all these little galaxies, long, long way away. Zooming in. Very tiny. Tens and 
hundreds of thousands of light years away from us. But the main ones that I wanted to get in the image were these three here. NGC 4220, 4217 and M106. Now if we look at, um, go to a website. And let's just bring up um, M106. And we'll look at some information on it. This is the big one. You can see this one, M106, this image here. actually 22 to 25 million light years away so what we've actually imaged there that light that we've captured there with the telescope left that place in space 25 million years ago to us so you're kind of looking back in time let's have a look at this one here ngc 4217 Right, this one's even further. This one, NGC 4217, is 60 million light years away. So, another one fed it away. The last one, look at it's NGC 4220, just to see how far away that one is. is going to say about this a wiki page on this we'll have a look at this website here telescope which used to be dsobrowser.com but they changed it um, 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 this one's 42 million light years away but you can see the data on this one so yeah i th think that was quite successful that last part of processing we did on that set of galaxies as I said, the previous processing of this image is actually on my YouTube channel. This is my first stream that I've done on Twitch. I have no idea if it's coming through okay. If it is, great. If it isn't, then I'll do something to fix it for the next for the next stream. So, but the the, the stuff that um, I've already done is all here. This, this galaxy. This explains how I actually got from raw data to this here so that's it for this particular stream it's 20 past one in the morning i'm gonna have to get uh, off to bed work in the morning so yeah i hope you've enjoyed it and uh we'll see you next time cheers for now